Hello once again everyone and welcome to another unboxing with Awesome CCG. As per usual, my name is Jeff. I'm a regular here at the shop. And uh, I have purchased, although I can't take it home today, a collector booster box as I do with most sets and I am unboxing it here on video for the shop so that y'all can see some of the things that you could possibly pick up if you come in to play. Uh, first thing you should note is that there is a Realms and Relics box topper in each collector booster box. Uh, they also come in other boxes. We're going to start with this one just for something spicy right off the bat. There are 12 boosters in here. If we're going to set aside for the moment. Just barely off screen. So, uh, as per usual, I give you a little bit of lore, I give you a little bit of finances, I give you a little bit of strategy. Um, it's going to be more up in the air than usual this time, because rather than trying to explain a magic plane with which you may or may not be familiar, this set is based around The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you're at least aware of it as a general rule, otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So when we open this box topper, it's going to be a reprint of an existing card, but with some kind of Lord of the Rings re-theming done to it, similar to uh, something that they did with Godzilla cards back in Ikoria. So we open this up. I'm trying to be careful. And we have name for the Lord of the Rings version is Shards of Narsil. What this actually is, is a Thorn of Amethyst, uh, which is a really, really good card. Uh, Non-creature spells cost one generic mana more to cast. So if you want a fancy Lord of the Rings themed Thorn of Amethyst for one or more of your decks, this is one way you could pick something like that up. Set this off screen and get to the actual boosters. Oh. Similar to the last set, they seem to have really sealed these. So I'm going to have to come in with the box cutter and get the box of the packs. All right. Trying to be careful in case there's a spicy card in here. Uh, for our token, on one side we have Smog, the famous dragon from The Hobbit, uh, who is referenced in stories. This token is going to be created by one of the sagas that appears in the Lord of the Rings set. Food appears all over the place. It's a major sub-theme of uh, the Hobbit cards that appear, not the book, the Hobbit, but the, the creature-type Hobbit um, halflings that show up. Uh, so there are lots of things to take advantage of those. On to our actual cards. We have Chance Met Elves, a Dunlin Crevain, Gimli's Axe, Lash of the Balrog, Yorith of the Healing House, Grima Wormtongue. There's our commons and uncommons, which, like with everything else, we will set aside. The special lands this time around are actually map lands. So for a forest, here we have Mirkwood with a view of the Misty Mountains from uh, a reproduction of one of Tolkien's maps from the books. I should note, uh, before we go any further, this set, when I say it is based on Lord of the Rings, it's based on the books Lord of the Rings. You're not going to see representations of the actors and actresses or the bigotures that, that went a workshop made. They take some liberties, but they got their approval directly from the Tolkien estate, and they are based on the book. So you're going to see things that never appeared in the movies. You're going to see things that are different from the movies. Uh, so that's the only way you've experienced this series before. Some of it's going to catch you off guard. Um, this, for example, is an illustration directly out of one of the books, although colorized. We have Press the Enemy with Aragorn revealing his sword to Sauron via Palantir. Display of Power. Eomer, King of Rohan. 
Here's our next special treatment, is a ring-style treatment. Uh, characters that interacted with the ring in a meaningful way is how they said they are, when I say they, I mean Wizards of the Coast, decided to give this frame treatment to certain cards. So the four main hobbits get these, the, the Fellowship of the Ring get these, um, Sauron himself gets one of these at some point. Uh, there are at least two, and in some cases, three or four versions of the major characters in the story. So there's more than one card representing Frodo. There's more than one card representing Saruman, etc. We have Pippin, Guard of the Citadel. Last March of the Ents. Now, you'll notice that this is a borderless card. What they're doing this time around is some cards are individually borderless, and some of them actually form panoramas. They've been referred to by wizards as scenes, where you'll have anywhere from two to three to nine cards. Actually, it might be more than nine. It might be as many as 12. That form, if you line them up the right way, uh, a one single piece of art unifying everything. This, I believe, for Samwise the Stouthearted, is also a scene card. And our last one here is the Belrog, Durin's Bane. Hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming, but we saw basically all of the special treatments that we're going to be seeing in that pack. So I need to pause. Uh, let's go here. We, oh, yeah, actually, we need to talk about this for a moment. If you remember War of the Spark, there was a mechanic called a mass, where when that trigger happened, you would create a 0, zero zombie army token and then put some number of plus one, plus one counters on it. Every time thereafter that that trigger happened, instead of creating a new token, you would make the token bigger by adding plus one, plus one counters to it. They have a mass orcs this time around, since that fits the theme of Lord of the Rings. So this is a 0-0 token. The card that creates it will indicate that this enters the battlefield with some number of plus one, plus one counters on it. And other cards that a mass orcs thereafter will make this bigger. Here's a food. Uh, if, if you're wondering why that's food, it is, of course, Shelob, having turned somebody into a snack. All right, going a little more quickly. We've got a battle-scarred goblin. Goblins and orcs are pretty much interchangeable in Tolkien's actual fiction, but for the purposes of the game, they made them slightly different so that you can get different creature types. We have a generous Ent, Nimrodel Watcher, Fog on the Barrow Downs, Eowyn, Lady of Rohan, Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. There are a lot of legendary creatures in this set, just so that you know. Here's a Swamp, the Dead Marshes, Elrond, Master of Healing. Uh, we'll review this just for a moment to remind you. So here we have an uncommon Elrond card, and we have a rare Elrond card. They have different full names, even though they're both Elrond. If you wanted to play both of these in a deck, yes, you would be able to, and they could both be on the battlefield at the same time, because they are technically different cards. We have a Horn of Gondor, Arwen, Weaver of Hope, excuse me, Gimli, Counter of Kills, Sauron, the Necromancer, Dunlin Crabane again. This looks to me like one of the scene cards. Hey, there's Peregrine Took again. And this is a card that I would dare say is going to make some waves, Delighted Halfling. Uh, it's not often that a mana dork makes waves, although they tend to be just useful in decks that want to ramp. It taps for a generic mana, but you can tap it for one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast a legendary spell, and that spell can't be countered. Single green, it's a 1-2. That is a powerful mana dork.
our tokens are a Ballistic Boulder, which is a artifact creature. I hope that we get to the card that creates that because it's hilarious. We have Second Breakfast, of course. Brandywine Farmer. Mortar Trebuchet. Oh, hey, there it is, actually. Whenever you attack with one or more goblins and or orcs, create a 2-1 colorless construct artifact creature token with flying named Ballistic Boulder. That's tapped and attacking. Sacrifice that token at the end of combat. Oleg High Crusher. Foray of Orcs. Here's, if I haven't pointed one out before, and a Mass Orcs 2. When you do, this card deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the amassed army's power. Saruman's Trickery. A Mountain. We've got the Misty Mountains in this case. There's Shelob, Child of Ungoliant. Horn of the Mark. Crown of Gondor. Frodo Baggins. The Party Tree. Oh, I... Not that I should realize this right now. This is one of these style things. It's the Great Henge, which is a fantastic card um, done in the, what did I say this was called? Realms and Relics style, where it is being rendered as the party tree. We have a scene with Aomer, Marshal of Rohan. We have Samwise the Stouthearted. And Faramir, Prince of Ithilien. I'm trying to be very careful as I cut these. Not so much that I don't cut myself, although that's important, but so that I don't ruin the cards. All right. We have a spirit and more food. Took Reaper. Uh, we'll go to this mechanic real quick. When Took Reaper dies, the ring tempts you. I suspect that this is mostly going to be important in limited rather than constructed play. But there are reminder cards that tell you the four steps of the ring tempting you. When the ring first tempts you, you are going to, for example, make uh, one of your creatures, assuming you control any, legendary. And then as you get tempted each time, you will build up things that the ring bearer does or, or triggers when they attack or whatnot. Uh, sometimes they become unblockable by things bigger than them. Sometimes they loot, so you will draw a card and discard a card when they attack. Um, but it's a way of perhaps making your small and unassuming creatures a little bit more important in the grand scheme of the game by stacking abilities on them as bonuses for doing things you're already doing. Sam's Desperate Rescue, Treason of Isengard, Uruk High Berserker, Fiery Inscription, Gandalf, Friend of the Shire. Uh, different mountains. We've got the White Mountains here. A Mithril Coat. King of the Oathbreakers. Rapacious Guest. Elrond, Lord of Rivendell, which we already saw, but here's the ring frame treatment. Uh, Mediseld, Golden Hall of Edoras, Castle Ardenvale. Voracious Fell Beast. Another Dunlin Cremain and Elrond, Master of Healing, in a scene. We have a tentacle. And a food. Pippin's Bravery. Deceive the Messenger. Smite the Deathless. Woe's Pathfinder, Entish Restoration, Golem Patient Plotter. Actually, Golem. I always do that. Uh, here we have a different swamp. This looks like Gorgoroth as the swamp. Forge Anew. Forge Anew. Bilbo, Birthday Celebrant. Legolas, Counter of Kills. Helm's Deep, which is uh, Shinko, the Bloodsoak Keep. Mirkwood Bats, a Nazgul. Uh, the only thing I want to point out with the, the Nazgul is that there are nine different arts for them, for each of the, one for each of the actual Nazgul. And ending this with Lost Isle Calling. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. We're not quite halfway, so let's pick up the pace just a little bit. We had a human soldier and a food. It would appear that all of the tokens, the double-sided ones at least, uh, have food as one side. Arwen's Gift, Mirkwood Spider, Birthday Escape, Rush the Room, Frodo Baggins, The Grey Havens, An Island. It's a little hard to actually find islands in The Lord of the Rings, unless you're you know going way west over the ocean, which doesn't actually feature in the story except as a place people go to and then end up off screen so to speak witch king of angmar sauron's ransom feasting hobbit there's a different nazgul art a morgul knife which is actually shadow spear definitely a nice pull there gimli mournful avenger many parrot partings excuse me many partings and saruman the white hand All right, uh, sorry, we do this first. A different human soldier art on the token. Uh, there's that she loved food. Bewitching Leechcraft. Soldier of the Grey Host. Lothlorian Lookout. Gimli's Fury. Denethor, Ruling Steward. Saruman the White. Um, we may come across at some point, but for those of you who are Tolkien nerds and Lord of the Ring nerds and miss certain things from the story, uh, I'll tell you now, in case we don't see them, yes, Tom Bombadil is on cards. Yes, the Scouring of the Shire is on cards. So that's kind of a win for those of us who missed those, uh, since they did not make it into the movies. We have a Plains, the Shire. Aragorn, Company Leader. Doors of Durin. Lidless Gaze. Mariadoc Brandybuck. The Dead Marshes, which is Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Frodo Baggins in a scene, a voracious fell beast in a scene, and Aomer, Marshal of Rohan in a scene. Sorry, everybody had a little bit of trouble with that one. All right, another ballistic boulder, which, yep, leads to a food. Wizard's Rockets, which would make a great uncard, but they managed to make it work here. Haradrim Spearmaster, Slip on the Ring, Kirith Ungol Patrol, Dunedain Rangers, Rosie Cotton of Southlane, Plains, Legolas Master Archer, Goldberry, River Daughter. So there's uh, there's the Bombadil couple coming into this. Rampaging War Mammoth. Gandalf, Friend of the Shire, this time with the ring frame. Galadriel of Lothlorien. Foray of Orcs. Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. And the Green Dragon Inn, which is Homeward Path. Orc army, food. We're cruising now. The Black Breath, Banish from Edoras, Many Partings, Snarling Warg, Gimli Counter of Kills, Landraval, Horizon Witness, Forest, Moria Marauder. I, I want to know if this breaks into Goblin decks. File of Galadriel, Frodo, Determined Hero, Faramir, Field Commander, Frodo, Sauron's Bane, Another delighted halfling, Rosy Cotton of South Lane, and Shadow of the Enemy. We are closing in on our final three packs. I realize that I haven't talked as much about finances with these, uh, partly because everything is still very much up in the air. The big hits are uh, I'm I'm highly unlikely to pull them here in these last three packs. By the way, uh, somebody pointed out that you are actually more likely to get struck by lightning than to get the serialized cards in the set. 
but there are serialized soul rings, uh, 300 for, that are elven, uh, 700 that are dwarven, and 900 that are humans. Uh, they're going for quite a bit right now. There are also non-serialized of each of those, but instead it's 3,000 elven ones, 7,000 dwarven ones, and 9,000 human ones, which is still pretty small numbers. And then there is, of course, the number one of one, the one ring, um, which people are offering bounties for over a million at the moment. There's no way I'm going to pull that here, but whoever does, it's going to be life-changing for them, most likely. East Farthing Farmer, Great Hall of the Citadel, Ithilian Kingfisher, Haunt of the Dead Marshes, The Bath Song, Shire Sheriff, Island, Frodo Sauron's Bane, Hugh the Entwood, Galadriel, Elven Queen, Gollum, Patient Plotter, there's Tom Bombadil, Knights of Dol Amroth, Oliphant, Smeagol, Helpful Guide. All right, we have treasure, food, second breakfast, Brandywine Farmer, Mordor Trebuchet, Oleg High Crusher, Shadow Summoning, Book of Mazarbol, Swamp, Flame of Anor, Delighted Halfling, Balrog of Moria, Samwise the Stouthearted, Mines of Moria, Wizard's Rockets, Mirkwood Bats, and Boromir, Warden of the Tower. Last pack, wish me luck. Another tentacle and a food. Ents Fury, Relentless Rohirrim, Orcish Medicine, Westfold Rider, Gwahir the Windlord. Stern Scolding, that is a heck of an uncommon. Counter target creature spell with power or toughness two or less. And the more expensive the format you get to, the better that is. A Forest, Doors of Durin, Press the Enemy Again, Monstrosity of the Lake, Gimli Counter of Kills, Elisar, the Elfstone, which is Cloudstone Curio, Flame of Anor, More Wizards Rockets, and The Shire. That's kind of a nice note to end on, actually, is the Shire. So thank you for hanging out with us, as always. If you have any Lord of the Rings needs, at least when it comes to gaming, make sure to stop by at Awesome at some point. There is going to be a pre-release, there will be drafts, there will be boxes and packs to buy, and they've got a whole bunch of other stuff, too, including Lord of the Rings board games. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day.